Merry Meet. My name is Jack Knight, Lodge Winters, and I'm the founder of Jack Frost University. I'm a ceremonial magician, a sorcerer, and the White Wizard of Boulder Valley. Um, this is my series, and this is part one of my series entitled Courtroom Sorcery, uh, Word Magic, Admiralty Law, and Druidic Law. Okay, so let's begin. Um, so there's two types of law within planet Earth at this time. I don't know, there might be more, but I'm only um, aware of two. There's the law of the land, and there's the law of the seas, okay? The law of the seas is also called admiralty law. It's also called maritime law. Um, it's the laws of commerce. Everything, all, all admiralty law, all maritime law is all laws of commerce. It's all about business. And as I discuss, uh, as I'll discuss later on, you'll see that even humans are treated as some kind of corporate asset, at least in the year 2019. <clears throat> so, um, you know, it's all about the laws of commerce. And I'm going to discuss the laws of the sea first. I'm not going to talk about the laws of the land just yet. Um, I don't know too much about it at this point, but I'm still learning. Um, so I'm just going to be, dis in this first part, I'm going to be discussing the laws of the sea, okay, commerce. Um, and it's governed by the Holy Sea, okay. All words that stem from maritime law are all maritime nautical terms. And it's easy to see once it's presented to you in the right light, okay. So, uh, and also it's, it's always, all these legal terms are all related to seawater. It's not talking about living water, not like lakes, okay? The difference between a lake and a, and a sea is that the seawater has salt in it, okay? River water is natural water. You can drink it, okay? Water from the lake, you can drink it. it there's no salt in it. And of course, it's probably not the best quality water for you, but the point is it's not poisonous to you, or it's not... Your system, uh, you just can't drink seawater. <laughs> you can't drink seawater, it's gross. Uh, it doesn't work out for you. So, and there's, and, and there's a reason why I'm throwing that out there, okay? So Jesus referred very frequently, or Yeshua, or however his name was, he referred very frequently to living waters. He came offering living water, okay? That's like river water, lake water, probably more like river water, okay? Ponds, streams, stuff you can actually drink. He walked on the Sea of Galilee. He walked on the water. Okay, and this is, I'll talk about this more in detail later, okay? I'm going to read some terms to you. Uh, I'm going to read some legal terms that show up in a lot of legal books, okay? And see if they sound familiar. They're all about ships. It's all about nautical terms, okay? So you got citizenship, business partnership, ownership, battleship, censorship, championship, friendship. Hardship, membership, survivorship, leadership, and then the most important one, the one I find interesting, is worship. Okay, we'll talk about that one later too. Um, so th there's a link between maritime law and all of the terms that we use in our banking and medical facilities. Okay, all the banking and medical facilities are using term. All of the you know legal companies tied to the federal government are, are using terms related to the sea, related to maritime law, nautical terms. It's, it's all very interesting. Um, for example, when a, let's read this here. When a ship pulls into its berth, someone ties the rope, which is also called cord, to the dock. And the first thing a captain must do is present a certificate of manifest to port authorities before you can deliver the cargo. So, in comparison, you know, you as a man or woman came out of your mother's water, you were birthed in a delivery room, and therefore required a doctor, doctor, to authenticate your birth certificate. The doctor cuts the umbilical, uh, umbilical cord, okay? So, there's some other, some other important terms when it comes to the sea. So some of the other terms um, that might sound familiar to you that I need to tell you about are uh, the word bank, 
okay, as in a river bank. Okay, a bank directs the flow of water. Okay, um, and also um, the currency. Okay, you have current. Okay, river, or I should say, uh, you know, the sea has a current. Okay, um, current sea. Okay, don't put, don't pay so much attention to the spelling. Just listen to the phonetics. Listen to the sound. Current sea. You have two words there. They're both related to the sea. Current and sea. And that's, you know, we get the currency from that, like a dollar bill or something. Okay. Um, and then a baler. A baler is a device that's used to empty a ship of its water. So if you have a ship and it's got a, hole, it's got a leak in it, it's got a hole, if it starts filling up with water, you use a, you bail it out. you, you got to use the, uh, this baler to bail out the water so you can save your ship. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we have banks. We have banks that hold our currency, and if you're good with money, you have cash flow, okay? Um, banks get bailouts. Banks get bailed out um, from time to time. We know this, right? So, um, and then some other parallels you might find interesting are liquid assets, frozen accounts, and frozen assets, okay? All nautical terms. So. You know, if you keep looking into it more and more, it's, it's rather kind of fascinating, but it's also kind of frustrating and annoying, okay? Um, the laws of the sea, admiralty law, and all of our banking and medical facilities, they're all using terminology based on the water, okay? The one I found particularly interesting that I wanted to bring up is uh, worship, okay? Um, you know, if you look at this, the legal structure of a church, they're, they're classified as a 501c3, okay? Uh, IRS, tax, uh, IRS tax code. All churches, if they want a tax-exempt status, if churches want, or, or temples, religious institutions, if they want a tax-exempt status and they don't want to pay taxes, then they have to have an IRS uh, status of 50, uh, tax code 501c3. It's uh, 501, chapter C, subchapter 3. Okay, and that's when they get that designation, they don't have to pay taxes on their income. Okay, um, and if you keep looking up, you know that they're all owned by the federal government, and the federal government's owned by the church and crown. Okay, but the what I found interesting about worship is it sounds like warship. Okay, um, so it, oh, by the way, it's all owned by the Vatican. <laughs> if you keep chasing all all the, the power hierarchy, it goes all the way up to the Vatican. At least it did. I'm not sure if that's still the case anymore. But um, uh, so in in, worship, in 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 a typical church, in a Christian church anyway, you have a worship. You have you know it's called a worship. You have a worship ceremony. You know everyone stands up and, and worships. Okay, what you're doing in, in that time of war is you're you're sending positive energy energy to Jesus. And you're sending negative energy to Satan, right? That's what they do in their worship ceremonies. They're warring. They, okay, it's called intercessory war, intercessory prayer. You're sending from your heart waves of positive energy to Jesus and negative energy to Satan. That's what they do. They're warring. They're intercessory prayer. Uh, inter intercessory prayer. Okay. Um, so it is war. It's a worship. Worship. It's Again, more more navy terms, right? More nautical terms. Um, and also, I wanted to show you this picture. You know, there's a bunch of different serpents w within our stories and our history books, okay? And in, in our archaeology findings and everything, there's just there's a bunch of different serpents in our history. Um, some good, some bad. Depends on your take on it. But I wanted to make note that. Here's a picture of the uh, the Vatican. This is one of the halls that they speak in. Look at the Vatican. Look how it's shaped like a serpent. It's got the two eyes. It's got the scales. And even look at the teeth. It's got two teeth like a serpent, okay? Now, I just said that the, the Holy See is the one that governs all admiralty law, okay? That's the Vatican. And look where they speak from. Yeah. Look, 
Listen to the Pope, how he speaks out of the fangs of the serpent. But notice, the, I, I call this Leviathan. And this is very difficult, that's a very difficult organization to conquer. Okay, Leviathan, the, the sea serpent. Okay, it's a sea serpent, holy sea. Looks like a serpent, and he speaks out of the mouth of the serpent, right? He's speaking in there. Um, so that's the Leviathan, and you know, if you didn't know anything about uh, Sumerian cuneiform texts, you know that Marduk had a hell of a time conquering Leviathan. It's a sea serpent. Now I'll take note of this other person, the Kukulkan. Kukulkan is a feathered serpent. Okay? He's not related to the sea. Kukulkan, or Quetzalcoatl, is a feathered serpent. That means he's an air serpent. He's a serpent in the air. Okay? Whereas the Vatican is the serpent of the sea. Two different uh, entities altogether. Okay? And then maybe you have land serpents too, but I don't know too much about that. Okay? Um, so if you want to understand sorcery, and you've got to understand... Um, you have, to divide, you have to divide your understanding of the world into three, three segments. Air, or sea, air, and land. Okay? If you want to understand sorcery, you've got you to gotta divide the world in three. Sea, air, and land. Okay? Um, you know, there's these three characters in the Sumer Sumerian cuneiform text. Anu, Enki, and Anlil. Okay? Anu was a sky god. He was in the sky. He, his dominion was in the sky, and he gave dominion over the sea to Enki, and he gave dominion over the land to Anlil. Okay, and that's part of sorcery is understanding the contracts that exist between the angelic hosts. That's just what sorcery is. You, you want to know how to capitalize off of what's going on on planet Earth? You need to understand the contracts. So Anu granted dominion to, to his you know two peoples. And one is the sea, and then you got so you got the serpent of the sea, Leviathan, which is connected to Enki. And then you've got the land, but I'll be talking about the laws of the of the land later on in the, the druids and, and all that stuff, because that's kind of where my heart is. Um, also another thing to note is that Hermes and Hakate of ancient Greece the gods of ancient Greece, the mystical, magical gods, uh, Hecate and Hermes, they were the only ones that were allowed to um, travel freely throughout both all sea, air, and land. All three realms, they, they could travel freely, probably because they're friendly, that's, that's my guess. Friendly with all the other gods, right? Um, and they were able to, to roam these realms without altercation. Um, so, also, you know, you got the Navy SEALs. The Navy SEALs can all, uh, also go on all three realms. Sea, that's what, that's what a Navy SEAL stands for. A SEAL, sea, air, and land. Okay? So, it's also, you know, you want to know about Jesus and how he relates to the, to the laws of the sea. You know, obviously, he did not like Roman maritime law. He hated it. Romans hated Jesus. Jesus hated Romans. <laughs> that's the relationship. Because Roman law is maritime law. It's admiralty law. It's the laws of the seas. But why do we have the laws of the seas when we're on dry land? Why? We can talk, and I'll talk more about Benjamin Franklin and how he got us back to, to common law and the laws of the land and how it only lasted for 100 years. But, um, you know, Jesus walked on the water. He didn't touch the water. That was all allegorical. It wasn't a real miracle. It was, just, it was allegorical. It was a parable. He walked on the water. He also turned water into wine. He didn't like water. <laughs> he just didn't like water. He was always doing things to get away from water. Also, Moses divided the sea so that his people could walk on dry land. Okay, all, this, all the Bible is all encoded, and there's a lot of mysteries in it, and it's not what people think. Okay, there's a whole new layer to it. Um, and I guess that's going to be it for, uh, for this segment and all speak more about part two later on. I'll talk more about the laws of the land, but that's part one. Hope you enjoyed.